Hello, I'm Russell Boudry, Router Product Manager here at Multicam. And over the years, I've received several questions about spoil boards. In this video, I'm going to cover the suggested materials for a spoil board, where to find those materials, maintenance of the spoil board, and common tips and tricks. One of my favorite sayings is if you can't hold it, you can't cut it. Now, the whole purpose of a spool board is to have a sacrificial, disposable piece of material that goes between the product that you wish to route or knife cut and your CNC phenolic or aluminum tabletop. There's a variety of different ways to hold your product to your spool board. You can use clamps or a jig. You can use some double stick tape. I've seen customers use a fastener gun, screwing the material down to the spool board or even a pneumatic nail gun. But obviously the most common and popular is using a vacuum pump. Fiberboard is the best material for vacuum spool boards when routing. It comes in different grades though. You have high density HD, medium density or MDF, and low density or LDF. Masonite is a good example of high density fiberboard. I don't recommend it for using it as a vacuum spool board with a medium pressure or high pressure vacuum pump just because it has so much glue and material that the CFM can't make it through effectively through the material so it can hold your part down. So I don't recommend high density or masonite as a spool board. Medium density does come in different grades. Uh, the higher grade is called MDF2, super refined or double refined. And its characteristics are that it, the density looking at the crosscut is the same all the way through. The lower grade called grade A or standard grade is typically easily found uh, at any home improvement store. And you'll notice that on this cross section, it most commonly will have a top, a granular middle and a bottom. Low density or ultra light MDF is more difficult to find, but it is absolutely my favorite because it allows the maximum flow through the pores of the material holding your part down. Um, in my experience, it is the most lightest color. It can be a light blonde or almost uh, uh, off white in comparison to the other products. It's more difficult to find and you're going to have to seek it out from a supplier. In order to find the different sizes of materials and thicknesses of MDF and LDF, you are going to have to try to find a supplier. The type of supplier that a wood shop would use for building paint grade or stain grade cabinetry. Now that supplier may not actually have LDF in stock, but you can provide them the link that I have to our supplier specifications for a product that we ship with a machine called TruePan Ultralight MDF. They can reference the 30 to 34 pounds per cubic foot and offer you a product in your area that will be very similar. When we're talking about maintenance of a spool board, you're usually referring to fly cutting or milling the top of your spool board to remove excessive routing marks so that the top surface is flat, true, and parallel to the gantry, allowing for a maximum amount of contact surface to the material you're trying to hold. Here's a simple example. This spool board's been milled recently, and my example of material is this piece of paper. As it lays on the spool board, the holding power is at its maximum because the contact to the material is almost in the high 90s, if not 100%. A spool board that has multiple routing cuts in it has multiple peaks and valleys, like this crumpled piece of paper. Now, my holding power is greatly reduced because I don't have the same amount of contact area. The most common question I get is how often an operator should table mill their spool board? Obviously, this is a difficult question to answer because it's all based upon the router's usage. I will leave you with this idea, though, that it just doesn't take very long to table mill your spool board if you have the right tool. This is a two and a half inch fly cutter bit with carbide inserts. It's about a $500 investment, 
but it can last you for years. I'm going to be executing this table mill at 17,000 RPMs. I'm going to be taking off 10 thousandths up to 50 thousandths, and I'm going to be moving at 1,000 inches a minute. It's only going to take a few minutes to do this spool board. One thing to remember is that there is no perfect vacuum pump. So always try to focus the power of your vacuum into the smallest working area you can. In this case, I'm working on a five foot by 10 foot machine with a four by eight spool board. And I'm gonna be using my vacuum zones to condense my work area to half of this sheet to cut this material. Previously, I discussed about standard grade MDF having a top, middle, and bottom. When you first get your MDF, uh, if that's the spoil board you're gonna run with, you're gonna wanna fly cut about 60 thousandths off the top, then flip the board over and do another 60 thousandths initially so that you can get more to this granular center. That's where the vacuum flow is gonna be at its best. If you have a large spoil board or the material doesn't fit a particular zone or your machine doesn't have zones, you're gonna to wanna to cover up any unused vacuum area, especially if you have a high pressure vacuum pump. The loss of CFM reduces your holding power to your material. So cover up these large areas with some kind of scrap material. Another helpful holding trick is anytime you're cutting really thin plastic or aluminum, it always tends to vibrate right out here on the edge. So a helpful trick is to Use simple masking tape out of here on the edge to minimize the vibration, maximizing your holding power. One of the issues you're gonna run into with fiberboard is it tends to warp from moisture. So this creates an issue as your operator is moving, loading and unloading material off of your table. You especially see this problem as you have multiple sheets of spool board on your tabletop. A good trick for you to do is you can run a bead of silicone around the outside edge or double stick tape. Once that is sealed, it will secure your spool board in place, allowing for greater productivity for your operator as he loads and unloads the machine. One of the biggest problems in routing is cutting out small parts. And when I say small parts, I'm talking about something about the size of my hand or smaller across a nested sheet of four by eight, five by 10, or even larger. Regardless of your vacuum pump, you're gonna to struggle to hold all those parts. There are several different tips and tricks in this section to help with that issue. One of the things you can do is use vinyl or transfer tape on the back of your full sheet material, setting the routing up so that the routing bit goes down through the material, but not through your vinyl or transfer tape. This allows the vacuum to hold the entire sheet and not just an individual part. Another helpful tip is to use routing mat. Now routing mat is almost has a, a small tackiness to it um, and it's breathable. So you would put it on top of, you'd roll the mat out on top of your spool board, put your cutting sheet on top of this, route down through it and into the routing mat the routing mat, because of its tackiness, will help secure that single part in place. One of my favorite cutting utilities is a long 3D ramp lead-in. So the router bit starts at the surface and works its way down through the material thickness and then going around. As the bit is going around the full thickness of the material, there's a lot of lateral force working against the part, trying to get it to move. But then as the router bit comes to the beginning of that ramp, as the ramp gets thinner and thinner, so does the reduction of the lateral force, helping it to break away from the sheet without moving the part. Another common cutting utility for holding small parts is tabs. Now, in order for these to work, you obviously have to keep a skeleton around the part. So as you're nesting all these, the tabs are connected to a skeleton and not trying to connect to another part. 
Another common utility is multiple passes. So you can set up your machine cutting to come down and do all the way down to an onion skin or a paper thin material thickness. Then come back and you're only cutting the onion skin. This reduces the lateral force helping hold the part.